far out in the ocean, miles below the surface, two realms set divided by the sea mountains. On one side of the ridge lived a powerful sea witch whose greedy heart cast a shadow on everything that tried to flourish. On the other side, the mere folk kingdom shimmered with light. There, the sea king and his four daughters dwelled in an elaborate coral castle. The littlest princess, Melody, possessed a beautiful voice, but she was not content to sing in the choir of mermaids. No, not like her sisters. She had no interest in sitting still on a royal throne. Instead, Melody explored the relics of the sunken ships and invented stories about objects she gathered from the wreckage. Once, she discovered a curious figurine that looked a bit like her, but for two cloth sticks where its tail should have been. Melody often wondered about the world beyond her home. Is it true that some ships glide across the top of the water instead of lying here at the bottom splintered in the sea? She asked her sisters, and the ball a fire burns overhead all the time? You and your daydreaming and silly stories, they huffed. Why concern yourself with the world above? Father forbids us to go there. The king had warned his daughters to stay close to home because the sea witch, who had been cast out of the sea kingdom, would someday seek revenge. The king had declared that an ancient sea turtle act as his young daughter's guardian and that she should trust that this wise creature to lead her true. So when Melody saw the turtle swimming up one day to take in air, she decided to follow him. The little mermaid trailed the turtle until at last she burst through the surface. Ah, she exclaimed. How strange it felt that half of her body to be shivering in the early morning air while her tail remained warm below. But a fiery ball rising in the sky offered comfort. As waves crashed around her, Melody saw whales breaching, fish flying, turtles bobbing in the foam. Beyond, she spotted a sliver of sand on the horizon. Moving closer, Melody saw a figure on the beach. To her astonishment, it had two stick-like legs, just like the doll she had found. Melody was so filled with wonderment that she started to sing. As her voice carried on the wind, the figure turned and waved. A friend, Melody thought with joy. Just then, Melody felt a sharp tug on her tail. Her heart beat wildly until she was greeted sternly by the sea turtle. Though Melody longed to speak to the girl on the shore, she knew she must obey her guardian and return to her kingdom. Alone with the relics of the world above, Melody thought of the girl and her friendly smile. The girl could never come to the sea kingdom, of course, and Melody could never walk on the shore. Perhaps the only friends she would ever have would be those she imagined. So sad, isn't it? Melody was startled to see the sea snake slivering in the mire. Here you are, stuck under the sea. But the sea witch, she can help you. Melody's eyes widened, terrified of the thought. So do not fear. The sly creature insisted. The witch is not a monster, but a healer. Melody knew the princesses were forbidden to ever, ever enter the witch's realm. 
It would break her father's heart to learn she had betrayed him. And yet, who listened to her stories of the spectacular world above? No one, she thought. In the heart of the sea witch's lair, the evil creature greeted with a stare that burned through the depths. Do you want legs? Is that it? The witch croaked. Uh, legs? Melody thought of the dog. Why, yes, I, I, I just want a friend. A friend? <laughs> well, what do you have to offer me? The witch snapped. I can give you my treasures, Melody began. A compass, a rope, a, a seagull. You think I want your sea junk? The witch roared. No, I want your most precious gift. The sea witch filled a small bottle with potion. I've heard that voice of yours, so pure so majestic, so strong, the witch rasped, holding out the seashell towards Melody's lips. You can have your legs, my child, but I will have your voice. Melody shuddered. Her voice? She wouldn't be able to talk or laugh or sing. Come here, child. The sea witch beckoned. Sing for me. And your legs, your friend, your dreams will be yours. Hesitating, Melody remembered the welcoming wave of the girl on the shore. Only the one person who seemed to care. As you wish, Melody took the shell from the witch and began to sing her story into it. The power of her voice, the notes rising with every breath. Finally, when she had no melody left, she passed the shell back to the sea witch, who pressed the bottle into the mermaid's hand. Once Melody had left the dark lair, she swiftly retrieved her treasure's dial and escaped to the surface out of sight of the sea turtle and emerged close to the shore. She saw a pearly disk hanging in the sky. That was surely the most beautiful thing she had ever seen in her life. She watched as sea turtles were scurrying in the sand, birds flying overhead. This is where I want to be, she thought. Taking a deep breath, she drank the potion. As her scales fell away, Melody found it more difficult to swim as she drifted towards shore. At last she felt the sand against her skin and winced as the sharp seashell cut into her foot. She was just starting to stand on wobbly legs when she heard a girl's voice. Hello, the stranger said smiling. It's you, isn't it? From far out in the ocean. The girl reached her hand out steadily, shaking it. I'm Zion. What's your name? Melody tried to answer, but no sound left her throat. Instead, she smiled back, shivering in the breeze as it whipped through the seaweed clicking to her body. Here, take my shawl to keep warm. Zion offered, wrapping her own shawl around Melody's shoulders. Hey, do you want to play? I'm chasing butterflies today. Together, the girls spent the day chasing insects and building sandcastles. Melody wanted to explore the shore's rocky caves, and Zion wanted to splash in the ocean water. They did both, until the sun started to lower in the sky. Though Melody could not speak, the two girls felt a surprising kinship. They both had love of creativity and adventures. You're the best friend I ever had, Zion confessed. And Melody's heart sang when she heard the word friend. Zion gazed intently at her now. At first I thought you were a mermaid, but that couldn't be. Where'd you come from? Why can't you speak? 
Melody retrieved the old doll that she brought from the sea and showed it to Zion. Then she picked up a stick and she began to sketch the story in the sand. Her fishtail, the doll, a girl waving, sea witch, the seashell, the potion. Zion gasped. I was right. You are a mermaid. Finally, Melody illustrated the trade she had made for a human friend. Zion shook her head in disbelief. You gave up your tail, your home, your voice for me? Melody nodded, and Zion threw her arms around her. I have something special for you, too. Zion ran into her house and returned holding a glass jar with a strange object in it. It's a caterpillar, Zion explained, but it's growing wings and very soon it will fly over the land. It's magic. It reminds me of you. How extraordinary, Melody thought and wondered. An explorer like me. But Melody, Zion said quietly, you should never have given up your voice for anything. Remembering the bargain she had made, Melody spotted the shell nearby like the one she used to cast the spell. She put it wistfully to her ear, and to her surprise, a distant echo of her own voice resonated inside. But now the sound was witchy, wild, and frightening. Then came a sound that called to her from within the shell. The sea witch has risen, came the voice of the turtle. Your family is in trouble. Come. Oh, what have I done, Melanie thought, realizing the sea witch had used her power of Melanie's voice to grow strength and strike in revenge. Though Melanie had no voice, she could still cry tears she knew that to return with me, she would never walk on land again and would perhaps lose her only friend. She passed the shell to Zion, who heard the warning and the summons. I understand. You must leave, Zion said sadly, but I'll always be your friend. Melody drew a long breath, deep down, and kicked furiously and followed the sea witch's screeches toward the battle. Her sisters cried out to her, Father's strength is useless against the dark power. Melody watched in horror as the witch wrapped her fat tentacle around the king's throat. Melody felt utterly helpless until she spotted the seashell that cursed her hanging around the witch's neck. In the next moment, her guardian, the turtle, snapped the necklace free with his jaws. Melody snatched the floating shell and felt the power of her own voice rising again. She shouted with the strength she never knew she had. No! The witch covered her ears in terrible pain, tumbling down, down, and down deeper, tumbling and writhing and drifting until at last she landed on the brittle coral the witch had sucked the life from long ago. The spell was broken. Melody had found her voice, a voice that no witch could imprison or silence. The little mermaid could breathe again, and when she cried to kick her legs, she felt her tail flip. She opened her mouth and a beautiful song came. Out of the coral sprang to life and the snakes slithered far away. And at the shore, Zion smiled as the stormy waters became calm once again. Her friend was safe.